Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Outbound for Dummies with Outplay where we have some of the world's most beloved uh, and renowned sales experts breaking down the whole outbound sales process with us. And today we are going to be talking about this platform that uh, you might be a little familiar with as a professional LinkedIn. So we are going to be talking about how we can actually um, optimize and personalize our LinkedIn outreaches to make it a sales engine for you. And to do that, we have the amazing Elise Archer with us. And for those who are unfamiliar, you should first follow her because she has some amazing content on her feed. But she is the CEO and founder of She Sells. She's a sales and business mentor and she hosts her She Sells radio show. And she's an internationally renowned sales and sales keynote speaker and trainer and she's been recognized as the salesforce top sales influencer not once but twice so we are so lucky to have you here elise thank you so much for joining us thank you so much samhita it's so good to meet you and if you like i mentioned this this to you in the pre-chat if you'll just bear with me i uh i have a three-year-old who coughed in my mouth recently and i'm getting over a <laughs> chest cold so my, my voice isn't quite what it normally is when we do an interview but i think we're gonna have a lot of fun and I think it's a great conversation and a great topic so I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely and I'm sure this is something that a lot of our followers are very excited to learn more about being on the platform themselves. Mm. Um, so let's get started with this question. So I think LinkedIn as a sales platform is really starting to pick up steam right now but I'm not sure how many people have actually nailed down the process of personalizing the outreach versus going on mass, just mm. reaching out as, to as many people as they can, trying to scale the personalized and personalization to say, but um, not nearly achieving that. So first, what exactly is the difference between just going on mass or versus mm. true personalization? Sure, sure. Well, I think what's interesting is today you you can personalize many things in a mass way. So mm -hmm. there's software and technology, obviously, outplay does, right? So there's there's a lot of platforms that do this and do this very well. I think, so my own personal background and experience is we built a coaching business that did seven figures in sales in its first year with a relatively small audience, no sales right. page, even for our programs. And it was all about personalized, customized outreach to the clients that we really wanted to work with making them feel seen and heard so much more of that i would say high touch quality over quantity approach and um and so i think there's a lot of different ways to be successful today in how we sell and how we market ourselves and our businesses or what, it, what we're selling if, if someone's listening who's an sdr and so to me one of the most important things is to find alignment in what feels most authentic to you with your reach out. So for me personally, I, I love that really personal one-on-one -on -one connection. So people will see that and feel that in my outreach to them um, because that's, that's how I tend to be wired. And simultaneously, I am not the best like mass marketer, right? I, uh, I, I'll turn it back over to you in a second here, but I, I just wanna share, I had someone on my own show last week, his name is Mark Drager, and he has a, a concept called core brand identity that he spoke about that I thought was really interesting, where he talked about finding what is the sales and marketing strategy that's most in alignment for you. And if you are, if you're wired as more of a salesperson like I am, you want that one-on-one -on -one connection. You're willing to often like take the time to do the research and connect personally and do the thing. If you're wired as more of a marketer, something like that is going to feel really tedious to you and you're probably not going to want to take the time to do all of that and you're going to build out some brilliant funnel and, and use a lot of personalization or use a lot of automation in that mm. too so I, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong but i do think that today more than ever people want to feel seen they want to feel heard they want to know that you actually care about them and so in an ironic twist the way to, I think, be more successful today with our outreach and even moving forward is to almost slow down to speed up. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll and, and by that I mean taking the time to personalize and really connect with people on that deep level when we're doing our outreach. So 
there's a lot of places we could go from there, I know, and I'll, I'll turn it back to you, but uh, that's some of my perspective on it. That's very valid. Um, now, you rightly said that uh, now, especially, we really want to feel heard and seen and not just feel like we're one in a million. Um, so how exactly, I think the key to that is actually doing your homework, doing your groundwork and learning about the person before contacting them. Um, what would you say is the best way to do that, to actually gather as much of relevant information about somebody before you reach out to them? Sure, sure. Well, and again, so there's there's a lot of tools out there that people can use that will help do that for them and, and present that information to them. Um, I think if you're doing it on a, on a manual side, right, um, there's, there's no excuse today to not come to someone, come to a prospect without having some sort of information about mm -hmm. them. There's information out there on everyone. And so, so again, I think it's going to depend on what stage of business you're in and in terms of what, um, what level of automation versus kind of manual labor makes sense for where you are right now. But if you're doing it on a manual, on a manual way, just spending the time, whether it's, I'm going to take five minutes and watch this person's most recent video or listen to their podcast episode, you know, we get so many pitches for my show. I'm guessing you do as well um, as the host of a show. And people will will say things where it's like, there's no way you could listen to the show and ask that question. And so mm -hmm. automatically it's a no because it shows that they haven't taken any sort of time to do the due diligence and research. So we've got, I'll, I'll just share on a personal example side. I, um, I'm working with a, a PR company right now and she's doing some podcast pitching for me. And it's laborious. It takes time because she's literally the shows that she's pitching for me. She takes the time to listen. Now you can get a lot of things transcribed and you can do things more quickly and you can, you can, you can kind of speed up that process. But I think when we're really wanting to be intentional, and I do think mm -hmm. that's a, a key piece of winning in sales today is how intentional are you with your connections and with your reach outs? And are you doing a spray and pray, check the box type of approach, or are you really recognizing this is a human being on the other side that you're connecting with when we're taking the time to do that it it, it is going to take longer on the front end but the the relationship that you build on the back end the report the referrals it's it's amazing mm -hmm. so just saying i'm gonna take 5 10 15 minutes to check out this person's linkedin profile or if i don't see much there i'm gonna do a google search for their name and see what i can find and maybe it's their facebook i I've got a, a lead I'm, I'm working right now for one of our programs and there wasn't a lot about her online that I found, but I did a, a Google search and found that she had owned a cupcake shop years ago and I would have no idea based on what she does now. And so that's a, a piece of information that I can connect with her on as we go deeper in our nice. conversation. So just remembering that at the end of the day, people are human and they want to be mm -hmm. seen and heard and just having that personalized bit of information, if it's one thing, makes a huge difference in the reach out. Absolutely. And this is especially an amazing tip for anybody starting out with sales reps um, to take that extra minute of time. And it's learning for you as well. If you're a sales rep reaching out, it's you never know how much you can learn from listening to those extra podcasts. Yes. Um, so that's a great tip for the SDRs who are, I mean, the whole sales team or the leaders are involved in creating a plan to execute um, LinkedIn outreach, but ultimately it's the SDR who's that the frontline soldiers. So um, keeping their role in mind, what do you think they should be aware of or what are the kind of skills they should work on to get LinkedIn out? Sure. Right. You know, I think today I was just getting off a call um, with a, a corporate client talking about this. And I think the the most important thing today is how can you be different? How can you stand out? And so using tools like voice notes. I, I feel like, I, I don't know, I, I think I've done this for so long that I feel like everyone does it and understands it. And yet every time I talk about it, I find that a lot of people still aren't doing it. So I'm, I'm, yes. gonna, I'm gonna say this with the, with the assumption that there's a decent number of people listening who maybe aren't doing things like this. So, um, so how can you be different and stand out? Can you send a voice note rather than just typing out a message, can't, which you can do on LinkedIn on your, on your mobile? 
um, recording a video. Can you record a video message instead? Sending a, a picture, right? Like, and obviously you want to have context with these. So we're not going to send if we're if we're prospecting a high level client. We're not going to do it in our sweats and jeans and 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 you know not bring the energy that you would bring to an in person meeting to that outreach, but adding that personalization and adding that that unique flavor is so important you know i do this all the time in my reach outs and it's still rare that i receive these in my inbox i get a lot of copy and paste very clear yeah. like a lot of bad i call it bad ai where they like the ai doesn't catch that i've got an emoji in front of my name so i, I kind of use that as a filter to see like who's real and who's not when they're reaching out to me i've got a bunch of screenshots of ai gone wrong that i use <laughs> yeah. in training um but you can you can do you can have a lot of impact and leverage with just thinking about how can i do something that's different than what everyone else is doing so getting confident using voice notes, practicing that, getting confident sending videos. And, and you can, some of that's just gonna come by putting in the reps and doing a lot of bad ones. You know, when I, when I first started building my personal brand and I, I first started in really 2015 with um, video outreach and messaging and the technology was very different then than it is now. But I, um, I remember my first I don't know how many videos, lots of videos that I did. I was using Facebook and I, I didn't know you should have light in front of your face. So I looked like just this dark shadowy figure because I had all the light behind me on my videos and I was nervous and there were a lot of ums and ahs. And yet there was still the heart behind it of mm -hmm. wanting to connect personally. And I think at the end of the day, that trumps the perceived imperfections that we can get caught up in our head about and I think the other thing that's important with this too, and I'll just say this before I turn it back to you is people don't trust perfect. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're an SDR and you're listening or you're a leader and you're listening, and you're wanting to train your team on this, know that they'll get, they'll get hung up in, in thinking it's going to take me like 15 minutes to record this message. Cause I'm going to have to do it 20 times. Um, because they'll, they'll be self-critical or they'll think it has to be perfect. I send messages where, and I'm, I'm always, of course, professional, but I'll have my eight month old like gurgling in the background. And that's that's real life, that's me. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a mom who has, a, has kids at home with her while I also run our business. Or, you know, I think back to my top, one of my top performing videos that I ever put out, like I'm a, I'm a makeup girl. I'm a beauty girl. I've, it's just been something I always enjoy, but I had um, surgery for skin cancer several years ago and I, I had a black eye and I didn't look like I normally do. And I thought, you know what? So much of my brand and positioning has been like makeup, like I get that. I, I, that's just part of who I am and I enjoy it. And I thought I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and I'm going to do a video not done up with a black eye, like the next day after this surgery. And it was one of the top performing pieces of content I put out. Like people were like, thank you for being so real. So I say all of that to say, you do not have to be perfect with any of this. You just have to remember that it's a human on the other end and how can you make them feel seen and heard and how can you show up authentically and unapologetically as you are with something of value to them. So I'll, I'll turn it back to you, but I could go on and on about that because I think it's, I think it's important. <laughs> it's absolutely. I mean, we do get uh, into this trap of wanting to appear perfect, but we aren't AI. Like you said, we are humans talking to humans and it's so yes. important to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, so again, ba back to the SDRs who listen to us, uh, what would your idea of a good outreach that you received? What's the kind of message you see on LinkedIn that makes you say, okay, this is a good one. I, yeah. I take a second to read this. What, what sure. would the elements of those be? Sure. Yeah. I, um, so, so I'd say a couple things. One, I, I would definitely use the video or the voice note if you can. So I think mm -hmm. just doing that automatically, you're going to be different from 95% of the messages people are getting. And so I don't, I don't know about you. Some I know for me, I get, 
I can't even count how many messages every day of people pitching between all my inboxes. And so just remembering that your client who you're pitching is probably getting the same thing. And so we want to think about the psychology, right, of what's going on when somebody is scanning their inbox. If they're even in there, they very likely may have an assistant managing it or somebody else on the team. So I let I skim and it's like if something doesn't catch me immediately, I'm deleting like it. But just because you have to move when, when you have that much coming at you and your prospects probably do, you don't have time to go through and decide, mm -hmm. is this actually like it doesn't look that interesting, but is it interesting to me or maybe I should give them a second chance? Like, no, it's just people are moving so fast. So you're going to stand out automatically and you'll you will at least catch someone's attention enough to have them probably pause and listen to what you have to say if you do it in a different format than what 95% of people are doing. So I'd say that's number one. Number two, again, taking the time, like I love that you asked this before, how do we personalize? Taking the time to include something personal to them. So read their latest post. If they didn't post recently, look at what they commented on. Um, you know, do spend that five minutes of I'm gonna, I'm going to take the time to customize this and say something specific to them that is real, that shows that I care. And, um, and then from there, I think the other thing is I, I worked with a company years ago that called it making a buying atmosphere. So when we mm -hmm. do our reach outs, I, I don't like to be assumptive that what I have is going to be the perfect fit for everyone. If, I, if you're reaching out to someone, you should probably have a sense that what you have could help them. But yeah. still, we if we are too strong, I think on the front end of, I've got the silver bullet that's absolutely gonna help you, automatically people are turned off. They're like, no, nah, I don't trust it, right? So creating this buying atmosphere is, is, or just creating an environment where people feel open to explore, to me is about saying something like, hey, I've been checking out what you do. I've got an idea for you based on it. And, and it, look, it may or may not be a fit. I really don't, I'm not sure. But if you're interested, it's, you know, it's helped XYZ company do this. Would you like for me to put together a two minute video demo for you and send it? Would you, or depending on what you sell, would you like to schedule a quick five or 10 minute phone call where I can share more and we can see if it, if it even merits further conversation. So it's kind of that lean back energy where it's like, I don't know, but let's explore. I think it could be a fit. And if it's not, that's fine too. But I find that having that type of energy when we're doing an initial outreach, people are so much more open and receptive to it. So be different, be personal and lean back and just be in that energy of let's explore and see. And I think you'll get the best type of response from that type of energy in your outreach. Absolutely. I resonate with that completely. Um, now, like you said, you run a really successful business. So um, I don't know if you deal with this at all, but is there something the CS teams come to you with saying that, you know, outbound, outbound your LinkedIn is a struggle because of X, what would that be? Is there something mm -hmm. that's stopping them from getting the most out of their outbound? Is it a practice thing or do they just something about the approach that doesn't work? Yeah. Well, again, I think it, it comes down to, are you doing what everyone else is doing? Mm -hmm. and, and again, you, you can, like, can you be successful in that way? Yes. It's going to be a numbers game. It's going to be a volume game. It's going to be a bit of like the spray and pray type of energy, which is just for me personally, that is not how I like to sell. It's never how I've liked to sell. So I think when we, when we can remember what we've talked about here, the personalization. And again, there, there's great technology like what your team offers that can help you personalize more at scale. Um, when we can infuse the human element into what we're doing, then things are different. And I also think using tools like, um, I recently had Sherry Tree on my podcast and she invented the bank personality system and they've got great AI that can plug in and tell you based on this person, this person's personality style, here's the type of message I would send or something like a crystal nose, which I love and I use as well. So there's all sorts of great tools that we can use to help us in our, in our efforts. And I, I just believe the more, the more we do things just like everyone else, the longer it's going to take to get to the end goal. So the more you can be different and unique and whether it's rolling up your sleeves and doing the manual personalization, like we talked a little bit about how to do, if it's getting a great tool, that's going to, help you with that um 
using a plugin that helps you determine your prospect's personality style and how to customize your messaging to them be different like that's the name of the game today you gotta be you gotta find ways to be different yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, now, I think a lot of businesses are very familiar with like uh, the more traditional sales approaches like cold calling and I think they have a system in place to kind of monitor or at least um, set a cadence for kind of evaluating how the sales reps are doing. Mm -hmm. But I think this gets a little trickier with something like LinkedIn outreach. You can't really monitor every single thing that your reps are doing. So uh, how, how do you think for a sales leader is the best way to see how how to help a coach there mm -hmm. get better at this or how to sure. just empower them to get better at this. Yeah, absolutely. So, so again, there's great tools out there that you can use um, that are AI powered to, to help analyze and assess sales tools, right? So there was sales performance and, and outreach performance of your rep. So I probably won't get too into that on, um, on this call, but I think from like a, if I'm going to sit down with someone on my team and I'm going to help them, I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to look at the messages they're sending with them. And I think, and we're always, I think it's so important as a leader to lead with curiosity and it's never in an, an energy of judgment. Cause you got to remember everyone on your team, they're doing their best. They're doing the best they can with what they have. Even if sometimes you don't think they are like they're doing the best they can with what they have. So if there's an area of opportunity for improvement, I think we want to lead with curiosity and I would look at some of the messages that are being sent out and I would really just have the rep analyze, like, would that catch my attention? Would that, would I respond to that? If someone reached out to me with that message, would I want to respond to that? This, so as a business CEO, obviously I'm managing sales. I'm also doing marketing. Like I'm doing all the things. So I think this with my marketing. Is that post that I just put out, would I stop my for what I just put out and, and not every time like I'll be honest sometimes it's a yeah that would catch my attention sometimes it's not I would keep on going so it's mm -hmm. the same thing when we're auditing our sales outreach messages and link messages is when I stop would that be compelling enough interesting enough to me to get me to stop and then the messaging in there get me intrigued enough that I would say yes if not okay, what are we going to try differently next time? What are we going to change? Again, always just an energy of support and curiosity and how can we keep elevating and improving? And, um, and I think as a, as a leader too, like being willing to share, hey, this is when, like share our own mistakes. You know, I, I, I feel like this time it worked really well for me. I messed it up this time when I was trying this and mm -hmm. want to like help you learn from it and not have that same pitfall. So we need to be, again, that's maybe the theme of this, interview it is like how do we be human in the world of so much automation so being human in that feedback and in that leadership i think is true too absolutely you know this conversation is really kind of um take, making me take a mental look at my linkedin um messages to see you know what what kind of things that's yeah. come in the past and what made me stop and you, you really are right about the video because of a very crowded inbox i distinctly remember one video message that I got and it wasn't necessarily a fit for me or my role but I remember it because it was such a personal way of talking to me speaking directly to me which I haven't seen anybody else in my inbox too lately and ultimately I connected to the right person in the organization so that's what folks she's right it works yeah it absolutely works and, and so again it's just it's that intentionality Mm -hmm. what you're to what you're doing can if, if i can just share one quick example to, to pick back off of that too um I, again we get a ton of pitches by podcast every day and i, I usually we're just like mm, we just don't have time to go through all of them and but there was someone who reached out to me on linkedin and it was for his boss to come on and he took the time to record a video and he even in the video, it, it was very complimentary. So, of course, it appealed to me. But he was like, you know, I'm, a, I'm a raving fan. He, I think he said something instead of like, I'm, I'm nervous to be sending this. And I don't know if he really said that or not. So, you know, it, he took the time to put something together that made me feel like he appreciated what I was doing, made me feel valued by him. And it was like, hey, if, you know, my boss speaks on this, this, and this, I think it would be a great fit for your show. 
I'd be so excited to introduce you and connect you. And I was like, you know what? He took the time to record this video and make it very personal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up connecting and had a great interview and built a really good partnership based on that too. So it makes sense. And again, just think, put yourself in your prospect's shoes. What is going to make them want to stop and pay attention? We got to get off the hamster wheel of just checking the box with things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So in the middle school, I'm doing of my uh, LinkedIn inbox. Um, the thing that stands out to me specifically is that how um, a lot of messages are about, I mean, there are people trying to relate, connected to the activities on my account, maybe a quick research of my name, but there is always this force fit pitch that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily tie to the initial bit of the message. Um, so I think that's something that's often as a receiver. Have you experienced that? Have the people who come to you for help, is that something they struggle with? It's, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I get, so yes, I experience those daily, probably hourly, <laughs> which I'm guessing you do too. <laughs> and I, I mean, just, again, think about like if you were going to a networking event and someone walked up to you and, and if I was like, hi, I'm Elise, I do sales and business coaching and I help people do blah, blah, blah. You would, what would you do? You'd be like, how fast can I get out of here? <laughs> I'm this conversation with her. So why is it any different on LinkedIn? People think that it's you know, again, it's it's are we are we surface level? Are we skimming the surface? And are we, and I think this also speaks to as a company, what are the things that you're telling your reps they need to do? Why right? are you telling them you need to send a hundred cold outreaches every day? And if so, of course they're just gonna they're they're gonna do more of the spring, right? They're gonna pitch too early because they feel the pressure to do so. Yeah. And so a lot of this boils down to messaging from leadership and higher up within the company of we're being told you need to do to be successful. But if you're doing that, and it's, again, it's no different than if someone, if you were walking up someone in a networking event, you just pitch them right off the bat. Like you're gonna turn people off immediately. Of course you're not gonna get the sale. So what would you do at a networking event? So nice to meet you. Yeah. What was that? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I love that. I love that. Yeah. that LinkedIn is the virtual equivalent of uh, networking. No, no, I love that. I love the way it's yeah. equating those two. I think that's something that's like a light bulb moment for a lot of people listening, I'm mm. sure. Yeah. You wouldn't do this if you met somebody in, in a dinner, like you're saying. So it shouldn't be any. I love this. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah you would, it's, it's, so it's no different. It's, it's build the relationship, right? You would build the relationship. And so this is where, when I'm working with clients, sometimes we talk about like masculine and feminine energy in sales and what does that look like? And so the masculine, and we all have both types of energy, but masculine is like, what's the goal? Let me get the sale. Let me land the deal. And that's, that is important. That needs to be part of it. Feminine is relational. It's about journey. So I think part of what is a challenge, and this was certainly my challenge as a woman in sales for many years, was everything that was taught and celebrated was, it felt so transactional. And it was just how fast can I close the deal for how much? Don't build the relationship. It's a waste of time. And I think we're in a, a place now where not everyone, but a lot, at least the clients that I'm talking to, are waking up to this, that we need, yes. we need a blend of both. And that when we take the time to embrace more of that relationship building and kind of what is that journey to the destination that ultimately not only do we close more, but again, we have, we have longer term client relationships. We don't have to turn over. We don't have the customer issues on the back end of the sale because someone felt roped into something. So this is, I did a, um, a, a live stream with a friend, a colleague, a, a client of mine, a former client of mine, Ian Koyak a while back and we talked about this concept, which I'm gonna be writing about in a book called Abundance Selling versus Scarcity Selling. So this is truly when we're in that energy of abundance selling, it empowers us to lean back, it empowers us to approach LinkedIn as a networking event, the same way we would, instead of let me show up and try to throw up with my pitch right off the bat, which is pure scarcity energy. And people can feel that and, and hear that a mile away. And, and you're, you're not going to close anything of meaningful value with that type of energy. Yeah, absolutely. 
Gosh, I could I literally talk to you for I think another two more hours. But I know you have a packed day, so I have one last question for you. And that is, uh, I think even maybe four years ago, LinkedIn might not have been featured as like a lead gen or a sales engine at all as a platform to bring in the user book meeting. But now we're rather quickly entering 2024. So um, is there something that you think um, the CS folks should know about um, tools or trends or anything you foresee that is going to change in the coming years that they should sure. be prepared for? Sure. That is open to. Yeah, gosh, I mean, it's already changed so fast this year, right? And it's just, it's getting faster and faster. Um, so I don't want to, I, I'm not going to speak to a specific tool here because there are so many and they just keep evolving. Yeah. I think in terms of a trend that's not going to go away and it's just going to get more important is for, for everyone to be thinking about their personal brand. And so whether you're in leadership, whether you're in SDR, you have a personal brand. And this is, this is actually something I, I help clients with and I've, I've done quite a bit of in, in my years too. Um, and with these companies I partnered with is it is so critical and is more critical than ever for you to be building that brand online and you don't have to be the head of a company or an influencer. It's, it's literally about um, showing up and adding value. So it could be as simple as reposting things that you think would be helpful to your target clients. It could be you launched a LinkedIn live series. It could be you record quick little videos with um, content that's helpful. And you'll, this is kind of that dance between the inbound and the outbound, right? Where, the more we can be present and building our brand, it people are going to listen more when you reach out and you do that outbound message. And you're also going to start to experience more inbound leads coming to you because people have been watching you and building trust and building rapport. So my friends at Brand Builders Group say, they say this and it's so true. People don't follow companies. They follow mm -hmm. people. Yeah. All right. So no matter what you're selling, no matter what your role in, is in a company, you need to be thinking about your brand and how you're going to be intentional about building that. And when we do that, it shortens the sales cycle because it builds trust. So I think that is something that will not go away and will only be more and more important as we enter 2024 and beyond. Oh, that's the best note to end this on. I mean, I love that session. I had so much to learn from it. And I know that everybody listening has a book full of notes <laughs> if they came prepared. Uh, so thank you so much, Elise. This was great. And we're so happy that you joined us on OFT. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. See you next time, folks.